What is up, me amigos? Welcome back to the Schmo Zone podcast, episode six. It is a loaded episode today. I'm David Schmolenson, aka the Schmo. There's a reason why I have this turtleneck on underneath this Barry Sanders jersey. My co host, Helen E. Sports. So, you're not going to let me do my own intro anymore? I'm just so excited, Helen. Uh, I know. I'm excited too. I mean, it's been obviously a great weekend. But I'm super stoked for the guests on our show today. Like I said, absolutely loaded podcast. We have Coach Eric about a scene in studio. Captain, Captain. Captain. And he's actually here. But wait, Captain, <laughs> I want to introduce you. Hang tight. Hang tight. And we have some stuff to review that we did this past weekend. Yes. And we have the eraser, Paulo Costa. I'm going to be the schmo with him. We're going to check that out. And then I'm going to be myself with him. It's going to be cool. I know. So excited. But uh, what you were excited for the other day, Chris Bryant, the Cubs, the big league weekend came here to Las Vegas that they always come every year. I've been covering it for a few years. I know now that you're a a Vegas local. uh, What did you think of that experience? Beyond excited to bring the schmo into baseball. Long time coming. Being a Chicago guy. Growing up on the north side of Chicago, it was Cubs this, Cubs that, Cubs everything, outnumbered. For the record, I am a diehard White Sox fan, but Chris Bryant is probably a top four name in Major League Baseball. I don't think there's any athlete that had a better 2016 year in professional sports than Chris Bryant. I mean, what, he was the National League MVP, the Hank Aaron Award winner, and... He won the the World World Series Series for the Cubs, a 108-year drought. I mean, come on. He was the man of that city in a a city starving for a championship when it came to baseball. Stoked to interview him as the schmo. It was awesome. It was amazing in the clubhouse. And and I'm sure that he uh, loved your interview as well because he couldn't stop laughing. Oh, yeah. It was was fantastic. Yeah, Coach, he's a third baseman. I guess we just got to bring you in because you keep talking about it. We got to review the fights. It's Captain America, Coach Eric about a scene in studio. What is up, my friend? Thanks for What's joining up? us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. UFC 248. Adesanya Yoel versus the Eraser. You know, they were fighting for the right to see who's going to fight for the baddest middleweight title that uh, the Eraser has, Paulo Costa. You surprised by the result, or did you have Izzy beating Yoel? To tell you the truth, I was I was very conflicted because uh, I've always wanted to see Yoel win a world title because I I because of because he comes from wrestling because he's how good he's been at the top of his game and he unfortunately he had a coming from Cuba it took a while for him to defect and come over here he didn't start till into his 30s so I always wanted I always knew he should be a world champion and uh, I kind of wanted to see him accomplish that but then I again I didn't want to fight him again I didn't want Paulo to fight him again and Israel and Paulo has such a rivalry I want Paulo to fight Israel so it was conflict that I wanted Joel to win but I also want Paulo to fight Israel so either way I would I, I could have been happy but um, I wasn't too happy watching the fight I'll say that yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Not so much about who you thought won, but what did you think about just that fight? Like, were you surprised? What were you <clears throat> initially anticipating, though? Oh, definitely I was anticipating a little bit more action. I believe Yoel is a master strategist in controlling fights and controlling the referees and a lot of times controlling the crowd not this time but i thought that he had something in his mind that he thought was going to work for sure he he's not a yoel is not anybody that does anything without having something in mind and uh, you know even though he came out there 
to tell you the truth, for that first two minutes where he didn't throw a fight, I was like, he's about to explode. He's got something up his sleeve. Something's about to happen. So it never happened, but I always felt it was about to until that last bell. Then and they got in each other's face. <laughs> after. Yeah, after. And, and for everyone who doesn't know, the wrestling coach for Paulo Costa, you were with him training for UL Romero. You went down to Brazil. You were in that camp. You're responsible for stuffing takedowns and that takedown defense with your amazing wrestling accolades. Are you surprised that Izzy was able to uh, withstand a lot of those takedowns? I know Izzy was taken down, but just in terms of how do you think Izzy fared against that strategy? Well, Izzy did great. I mean, he defended the takedowns or he got back up almost immediately. But I think Yoel's best, some of Yoel's best strikes and offensive striking came from right after he got the takedown. So I thought even though maybe Izzy could defend the takedown, he should have, as he's getting back to the feet, uh, Yoel was tagging him. And I thought that's, that was winning him a round or two. So I thought, I, 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 to tell you the truth, I thought you well won. <laughs> to tell you, I did think you well won. I think I, I saw Justin Gaethje tweet that he thought you well won as well. Um, but I also heard in the post-fight press conference, Dana White mentioned that, did Paulo get kicked out by security or <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Man, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on yesterday at 248 because not only that happened, Something happened with Korean Zombie and Brian Ortega, and he's also my fighter. And then Paulo, Paulo was going to uh, jump the fence. So they had Paulo sitting in the front row. And, and the first, I think, as soon as uh, Izzy won, Paulo was talking smack, and he might have, Izzy might have said something to him, and then he jumped the fence because he wanted to go in the cage. And then later on, in the interview with Joe Rogan, I think he had already been kicked out. And, and then Izzy had went over to to call him out and call him a baboon. And he wasn't there anymore. He had already got kicked out. In the Schmo Zone, we go all over the place. You also are the coach for the king of cringe, Triple C, Henry Cejudo. Coach, talk to me for a second, though, please. Before the Cringe Act, you know, he's Mr. American. He's Mr. Olympian. At what point did he transition to the king of cringe? And what was your role in that act? <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. We're going deep. That's a deep one because uh, I was trying to get Henry to kind of come out of his, come out of his shell for a long time, years, just for the simple fact is look what was happening. That even the flyweights were going to get dissolved at some point because they didn't think they were, were bringing enough eyes, eyes to watch them. So... It's like you gotta don't do something fake, but you gotta at least amplify yourself. Like me and him would fight over this all the time. And then, you know what I really think it is is that Henry won the Olympics, the only, the youngest one ever, the only Olympic gold medalist that year. In the wrestling world, there's nobody that does not like that. And he, so he would always be there'd be no trolling in the wrestling world. Comes over to MMA. And automatically, 50% of the people hate him. They want to see him lose, which is not normal for someone like him. He's used to being the hero or looked at and treated as a hero. So he kind of pulls back on, well, anything I say, everybody says something about me. So I'm not even going to say anything. And I can at least maintain 50% of the fans. So I think that was part of it. He goes, uh, uh, and then when he lost... He, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut till I win the title. <clears throat> well, then he lost the title and got worse because they're like, oh, you lost in a minute and a half in a knockout to a guy that you're an Olympic champion you lost, and you lost in the clinch department. So he even shut down more. And I don't, he wasn't even sleeping for a couple years. He didn't sleep till when he beat Demetrius Johnson. When he fought him the second time, he could sleep again. But he couldn't sleep for those two years. So he's thinking when I f beat Demetrius, I can, I can now be uh, come out of my shell and more people will like me. And <laughs> it didn't work out that way either. So then he was like, you know what? I'm an Olympic champion. I just beat the greatest of all time. I have this belt and more people dislike me. And then he's like, forget this. I'm done trying to please you. I do not care what you think. And that 
is how the king of cringe was was born. But here's the thing. When you mentioned that you wanted him to, you know, showcase his personality more and amplify himself. So did you expect him to do this quote, like the more cringy route or because there's a lot of different routes that I'm sure he could go, right? Yeah, but Henry is cringy. In real life. It's his personality. <laughs> we can attest for that. We yeah, hung out true. with him. We've been to his house. And hung out with these guys. It's a different yeah, it's, fun. it's a different type of thing because Henry you gotta remember, Henry's been sort of like a Hollywood for sports, like the man since he was in high school. Yeah. Like you're the greatest since high school. You don't you're never experiencing like what a like a what a normal teenager would experience, a normal guy that went to college experience. His upbringing from, you know, the moment he arrived at the Olympic Training Center until now is completely different than any other person would experience. So anything he, whether his personality, it comes from, from that, you know, where he's been experience his experiences in life, and he's ex has more. Uh, Interesting experiences probably than more people in the world if you think about it as at such a young age I mean look at what he's done. So That's uh part of the the cringe comes from him being himself and, and him being Able and I think part of this is too when you're famous and like this you could say anything in wrestling, and people would uh, smile like when you're on a date with a girl that likes you. You say something uh, stupid or corny, and the girl laughs. Well, that happens to everybody in the crowd when you're the Olympic gold medalist at a young age. They're going to laugh even if you say a corny joke. They're going to say that you're so funny, that type of thing. So that's what he's grown up with, always getting... He's being the man, so now you come coming to MMA, and now you're only the man for 50%, and the other 50 hates you. That's why avenging the loss to uh, Mighty Mouse, DJ, and becoming the man of the flyweight division, saving that division, was such a big deal to him, and that's why the cringe could come out over time. You also represent, not represent, you work with such other high-profile talent, like the Pitbull Brothers. Uh, you know, what's going on with the other organizations, and one thing we're talking about off-air is these crossover fights. Getting the best of Bellator to fight the best of the UFC you think it could happen. There's big fights that you're doing over the next week. I mean, talk to us about that, man. Pitbull Brothers, we're about to invade Ireland's SVG. When we arrive on their land, we're going to burn the shits. We're taking the castle, baby. Pitbull Brothers, Patricia Pitbull versus Pedro Carvalho, March 13th, this Friday. My birthday. Happy Your birthday. birthday. He's we turning are going to have a massacre for the Dirty 30. Pedro Carvalho will give you his head on a spike because Patricio Pitbull is coming after him like a rabid dog. Um, that's happening on March 13th. Leandro Ego is also fighting. He's Leandro. He's also from the Pitbull Brothers. Um, he's fighting in, on uh, the, the undercard of uh, Pitbull's fight. And... You know, I think uh, crossover fights. We just did Bellator uh, with versus Ryzen, and that was one of the greatest in the Saitama Arena. So it was one of the greatest events I think I've ever been to, and it was on New Year's Eve, and it was it was awesome for for something. If we could ever do something like that with uh, the UFC, and I mean, we a promoters. Job is to promote. So if you want to put the best fight on, it's got to be, in my opinion, the original champ champ versus the reigning champ champ. That's right, Conor McGregor versus Patricio Pitbull. That that's the fight to make to see if you really want to see who the real pound for pound fighter in the world is. Patricio Pitbull has been underrated for too long, and we're calling it out. That's the fight to make. So we're looking to dismantle and dishearten every soldier of SBG with the with, between Leandro Patricky Patricio and anybody else from the Pitbull Brothers. We're gonna take every one of their soldiers till there's no one left but General McGregor to save them, and then you will have. Pit, Patricia Pitbull versus Conor McGregor. Then nobody will stop that fight. I think you're pretty passionate about I'm that. I'm like, damn. But, but the thing, though, is when it comes to the UFC, I mean, they're the, they're the 
cash cow. They're the king of the crop. Dana's mindset would be, all right, this guy's really the best. Let's see him come over to the FC. He's got to be a part of my organization. Let's get him in this umbrella, and let's do it that way. It's the control factor. It's the brand factor. And I think that's what's getting in the mm. way. I think it could happen with Ryzen. It could happen with Bellator. It could happen with one championship. But when it comes to the UFC, he looks at his baby in a different light. True, but they also said he would never co-promote and co-promote with Mayweather. But that's boxing, though. That's a boxing fight. That's not an MMA they fight. Would never, uh, boxing would never fight MMA. Females would never be in MMA. Females would never true. be in the UFC. We we got to create reality. We we're, we're not going to just bend it. We got to create it and and it's guys like you. It's guys like the guys from Cage Side Seeds, these up and comers, these new journalists that are hungry, motivated, dedicated and not only that, they come from the 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 technology age and and, and are surpassing these the uh the normal type of, of journalism. That's right. The, That's the big network. The, the, the schmo. That, exactly. I, I love that you said that. It's and that, Helen Esports. And the Helen Esports. Don't forget and about Helen me. Helen no one's forgetting wait, about you. You didn't this give is an the, extra d introduction today. Shaheed, he didn't even want me. You didn't. Yeah, I exactly. Didn't give the, the disrespect. It's not the disrespect. You you were already talking. I said, hey, Eric, just you hold on for week, like too. five minutes. Hold on. And let's do that. Helen. Get everything off the chest that you had to get off, because there's a lot for you to talk about, too. By the way, and this is why I will say, I don't want this to get overblown. Wiley, Wiley Zhang, I, I'm for, Wiley Zhang, huh. you interviewed her for four-plus minutes in Mandarin. There is no journalist out there that can speak in Mandarin, fluent Mandarin and English, and that's a female like Helen. And she did this with Wiley Zhang right there on Media Day. I didn't see ESPN doing this. I don't see all the networks doing this. She's the only one who did that. And that's what I want to get off my chest on this podcast. Helen Yi Jayo. Helen Yi Jayo. Helen Yi Jayo. Helen Yi Jayo. We timed that. Ni hao ma. 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 Ni China. Ni Zui Li Zhang. I like, uh... Wiley Zhang. Zhang. See, I'm messing uh, up the name. Uh, yeah, what a hell of a performance. The best yeah. female fight in UFC history. Sure. And dare I say it, top five of all time. It's got to be. For sure. Instant Hall of Fame. Dana said yesterday, last night, filming this here on Sunday, for you, for all you used to know, we're filming this podcast on a Sunday. He said last night, that's instantly a Hall of Fame fight. How can you argue with that? And in Mandarin, I have to say, it was very intense, right? Pio Lian. Yes. Did you see the forehead oh, of uh, Joanna? Did you you seen those before and after photos? Oh my I, god. She is oh. she is a, a badass. She is oh, freaking yeah, amazing. Both of them. Both yeah. obviously both well, of them. Yeah, but, but Joanna to go through that, to endure that on the cappy right there in oh the forehead. My. She and came up respect. to me after the fight and she she leaned her head. And I didn't know what to do because I was like, I didn't want to headbutt her too. And I didn't want to headbutt her and hit her in the head. So I was like, oh, I was like, you were amazing. It was on my Instagram. And I, I was filming her and she came up and hugged two people and to my side. And then she walked over and dipped her head into me to like touch her head with mine. I was like, I'm not touching your head. <laughs> I didn't want to make the... it worse. So I was like, give a high Patting five. Yeah. <laughs> Ca Captain, Captain, I know you have a flight to catch. There's one more person I want to get to. And then. I got to get into character and do Paulo Costa, the eraser. He's going to be in here. He's going to be downstairs. I got to be, be in the schmo uniform and then come back up here with him. Last one I want to get to is Korean Zombie. He got into it yesterday with Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega, he had to pull out of the fight over in uh, Korea, yeah. in South Korea, mm -hmm. in December. I think he got into a fight, though, with his translator, his coach, his best friend. Yeah. I'm not sure. So what who, it was. Who you were there. Slap? What happened? Who did he slap? What was that all about? So and then you got to get out of here. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm part of this. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. So okay, interesting. let it out. Oh. Uh, this is about to blow your minds. So uh, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm putting too much onto myself, but uh, we went to South Korea for, you know, um, Korean Zombie versus Frankie Edgar, and there was Jay Park. Jay Park is like Korea's. Uh, biggest rapper. He's like one of ah, the most famous rapper. He's actually born and raised. I don't know. If he was raised in Seattle. I know that because he, he speaks English perfectly. So he, I think he moved to Korea at 17. Big time guy. He's done songs with 
I want to say two chains, maybe even Kanye, um, number one rapper, and he's also good friends with uh, Chang Sung, the Korean zombie. So when the Korean zombie won, I, I had met him and I was hanging out with him. I was like, I'm looking at him and I see he's got three, four million followers. I'm like, this guy's the key to getting Korean zombie a title shot. And I told him, I said, I think you need to be more involved in Chang Sung's thing because you have four million followers. Dana White listens to followers. If four million of your fans tweeted, you want to see Volkanovsky versus the Korean zombie, Dana White would listen to that. I, and I go, you're the key now. So then, like a month later, he's on Ariel Hawani show, translating uh, um, for for the Korean Zombie. And he had said, I guess the Korean Zombie had said that uh, he was ducking him. I don't want to fight him ever. He's he ducked me, so I'm looking at other people now. And that's what Jay Park translated. And I guess Brian Ortega was like, there's a difference between ducking and being hurt. And he didn't like what he said. And I think there was something like he was saying, don't kill a messenger. And he's like, fuck that. I'm going to bitch slap. Don't be surprised if I bitch slap you when I see you. Well, like, that's how it works over here. Not that kill the messenger stuff. And then I guess uh, he saw him. I was, he was talking to Logan Paul, because Logan told me last night, he's like, hey, this happened, and then Brian went and slapped some uh, Korean guy. I'm like, what? I was like, wait a minute. Brian slapped the Korean zombie? I was like, wait, wait, let me get to the bottom of this. No, Korean zombie was in the bathroom when this all went down. That's what I heard. He was in the bathroom. So I guess he went up, and, and he went over and said, what's your name? And then he said, Jay Park. And normally in Korea, you know, in the Asian culture, you bow. And instead, he slapped him. Damn. <laughs> so oh uh, I, I'm sure he caught him off guard, or I'm sure maybe it wasn't that hard. But you know, uh, Jay Park is a Jay Park's a gangster. He's a. Did he slap I him back? I see him train before. I think I think he pushed him back. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. Um, he didn't get embarrassed or anything. It was really fast, and it was more almost at the same time slap and push. But did he make up the word, the translation, or did Korean Zombie really say that he was ducking? He thought he was ducking him. Well, you know, uh, uh, when it comes to you know when it comes to translating, how do you say ducking oh. in in Chinese? So he probably said something that to translate, he used the best word he could think of, and he's that's duck. I mean, he could say he av he's avoiding me. But he used probably some slang. He's American. He grew up yeah. in America. So he knew. Uh, and I think he knew when he, when Brian came up to him, he knew that something was going to happen. Was I think he pushed it. I think might have been simultaneous push. He pushed Brian and him slapping him or one right after another. And then it was uh, really broken up. I don't think it was. I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, I think uh, I think it maybe was. I considered like a love tap. And. And they and now the Jay Park's gonna get the Korean Zavi to return him some love inside the cage. Phenomenal, Captain! You got a flight to catch. You're boarding in like 25 minutes. Yes. We gotta get you out of here. I'm gonna go down there and dress as the schmo. You gotta check it out. And last thing I do want to say to you: make sure Henry's training. I know he's got the girlfriend. He's gonna be at UFC 250. We'll catch you over at Narrow Force One and the guys fight ready. Make sure check in on you. Got a big fight. Against a legend, Jose Aldo, and uh, we're gonna kick it to the we're show. We're coming for that goat food, and we're also still. I'm still pushing. Remember, we did that that one show, me and you, emergency show. Paulo Costa versus Israel Adesanya, ESPN. Tough. That's the fight to make. The last style bender versus the eraser on for the ultimate fighter. Remember we talked about that? We did that? talk about it. It's going to be, July, it's gonna it. be a July 11th though fight week. It's The timing's not going to uh, work out, but eventually I do like that idea. I want it. Let's kick it to the schmo and the pro, Paulo Costa. This is the schmo with the pro. 13-0, and the undefeated UFC middleweight, the eraser, Paulo Costa, the day after... The style bender and Yoel Romero, how we doing? I'm good, I'm good. I'm I will be sad for the last fight, horrible fight, but I'm good. I'm f great. Who did you have winning the fight? Did you have Israel or did you have Yoel winning? Who did you think? <laughs> I think 
nobody deserve get win got that that win but Romero take the mid of the cage and go forward at the sun just ran 10 five minutes because that's what what he is he's a shame shame guy scare but nobody deserve win they say about Yoel Romero every time someone faces him they're never the same when they leave the octagon. But you're the same, right? But even stronger? Sorry, repeat the, the, the question. They say everybody who gets inside the octagon with Yoel Romero, mm. they are never the same when they leave the octagon. But you're the same, but maybe even stronger. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, I feel better than, than before, you know. Um Nothing, nothing changed after my my last fight against Romero. Just I feel better. I feel better now. More strong, more prepared, and ready to take his his head off. Take take that Sonia heads off. Now you want to get back into the octagon, but Dana White said you need a doctor's clearance, like a real doctor, not your friend over in Brazil. He I said. Has seen my doctor. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Uh, the, my, my doctor, my surgeon who did my surgery, he he say for everybody we have on on video his deployment. He say, Paulo, you have a license to kill. Go ahead, my son. <laughs> you know, I I get I got very fast recovery after my surgery. My my arm is 100 percent, 110 percent. I did boxing spa last morning yeah, again with Logan Paul Logan Paul is a tough guy <laughs> he make my lips a little, a little hurt you know because Logan Paul did that because you know I'm a tough guy and he, he also we did a very light boxing spa with, without mouthpiece mouth guard you know you understand understand completely without Paulo mouth guard, mouth guard because uh, you know, we are tough, tough guys. We don't care for, for take some hits. Like the Sana is scared. He avoid the fight. Me no. Logan Paul not avoid fight. Is Logan Paul gonna fight in the UFC? You think? I think he can if he want. If if he start training, serious to do this, he can because he's talent. Excellent. Now, Paulo, we'll get you out of here on this, man. I know you were doing some training at Muscle Beach, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have a good relationship with Arnold now because you're the eraser, he's the eraser. What's that like? I'm a big fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Actually, I never talk with him, you know, personal, personally. Just on my last fight, he was beside on the cage and... Uh, I changed some words with him. He 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 told me he followed my job, and I felt very glad to hear that from him. But I'm a big fan of him. It would be a pleasure to me to 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 meet him and to spend some time with him. Oh, so you haven't met him yet, though? Just in case, just when I, I was in cage, you know. Yeah, back over there in August, yeah. that UFC yeah. fight, 241. Yeah. Well, can we get a flex for the camera, big guy? Of course. Yeah. Look at this. Look at that. The most, the most, sca the most scary, right? Scary? Scary? Scary. Middleweight of the world is me, not yes. Romero. <laughs> the best looking, scariest guy in the UFC, Paulo Costa. He's the pro on the schmo. We're out. Now, it's not the schmo anymore. It's Dave Schmollinson. <laughs> yeah, what you, would you make of that, Paulo? I just had to flip character, and now I'm talking to you in a normal voice. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's a lot of difference. I, I, I didn't uh, know this personality you have. <laughs> different of Chimo, yeah, but it's good. I like Chimo also. But that's why I did it, man. I wanted to create the character, do something a little bit differently, showcase the personalities of good-looking people like you for the fans. They want to see it, and... Uh, I'm glad you rolled with it, man, because we come from two different countries, but we're on the same wavelength, I feel like. Yes, yes. I'm glad to be here also. 
appreciate it, man. But uh, one thing I did want to ask you, though, for sure, I know Dana White uh, had that press conference last night, you know, talked about how you are guaranteed next in line for the title fight. But you showed everybody your scar during the those media scrums that we liked <laughs> so much. You fought Yoel Romero with that torn bicep. You were not 100%. When did you tear the bicep, man? When did you tear that? Yeah. I fought against Romero in the last fight before Romero against Hall yeah. with 50% of my bicep, my, my left bicep. Wow. I tear my... My tendo, bicep tendo, on my train camp against Hall in 2018, on March or February, February of 2018. And uh, after that, I have fight with 50% of my, my, my left arm. So after beat Homero, I sit with my team and we decide to do this surgery, surgery because it was necessary, you know. But I can't, uh, I can't do this. I, I can't do this before my last fight against Romero because, you know, I I called less my opportunity to fight for the belt. So I did my last fight. Even with my 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 arm injury, to guarantee my my tire shot, you know. And now I feel great, hundred percent. The doctor says, the doctor told for 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 me and for my my crew, my team. I'm hundred percent now. I can fight on two three months. And uh, he he gave us my license to kill. How he say. License to kill. I love it. Your English is so good, man. Getting better and better every day. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> but um, obviously yesterday you were at the fights, and I know you mentioned to the schmo just kind of what you, you know, thought on, uh, I guess, the fight, right? The main event, Israel versus Yoel. But what were you expecting, you know, going into that? Like, what type of fight were you anticipating from them? The style. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, I know that. I know that fight last night could be a very horrible fight because he's scared. He's shame, shaming, you know, ashamed. And uh, he avoid the fight. He just ran all rounds, 25 minutes. He just ran for, you know, for Romero. And because he's he cannot go inside to fighting, you know. He he's he felt fragile. He cannot handle with hard punch, so he just ran. Uh, I was there. I'm feel shame to watch that fight. And uh, that's it. Now everybody knows how. That uh, Stallion Blade is a fake. He's not a true champion. He's not a true Waiho. He avoid some fights. He avoid the real, uh, let's say, confront. Uh, he he avoid the real fight. That's it. He he just run when he feels some some dangers. You know. But does that concern you that when you guys fight that he may do the same to you? Sorry. Does that kind of concern you? Uh, of a course, bit? of course. He will try to run. He will try to avoid that this fight against me. Of course. I did want to get your opinion on when you look at the middleweight division. You look at some guys like Jared Cannonier, and I guess now Darren Till's in the mix because he beat Calvin Gastelum. Who would you say outside of Adesanya and Romero, and of course yourself, are some really big threats? talented fighters in your division that you have watched and have your eye on? I think they they are good fights, good fighters. But Romero, when when I look for the fighters on my division, I still think Romero is is the most dangerous than then. 
You know, do you think that Romero won yesterday? Or Ho Romero is dangerous for who came to fight against him, not to who came to run off him from him, you know. Uh, because Romero is the same against everybody. He never will go 100%. He'll be lazy, you know, wait for the guys coming. And uh, when he face one guy scared, like Adesanya, happened what happened yes, last night. Nobody do nothing. Yeah, but earlier we spoke to Captain Eric, and um, he thought that Yoel won the fight. Did you think that Yoel won? I think for a little bit he won, but he don't he don't did nothing too too much to to get to win. I think uh, both don't deserve the the win, but he take the the middle of the cage, he go forward. So for a little bit, I think Romero got one. Speaking of got Captain, speaking of Captain America. Eric, um, he's the coach for Henry Cejudo. And I know you're friends with Henry Cejudo. You're from Brazil, the legendary fighter in Brazil, Jose Aldo. Featherweight, probably the greatest featherweight of all time. They have their fight at UFC 250, Sao Paulo. Who are you rooting for? Are you rooting for Henry Cejudo? Are you rooting for Jose Aldo? No, of course, I'm rooting for Cejudo. Even... Jose Aldo is a legend, as you say, and, uh, you know, I respect him too much. He did a lot of great things for our country, but maybe Cerrudo is more young or is, he's fresh. If he keep motivated and focus, I think Cerrudo can beat him. Uh, but I respect. I will be. I will. I will enjoy that fight for sure. Maybe I will be there. I don't know yet. My schedule. But Jose Aldo deserve our respect. And Cerrudo respect him. I know. And I know Henry's got a new girlfriend that he met in Brazil. <laughs> Hopefully, he's not too distracted with that. <laughs> the queen of cringe is now here. Yeah, he's smart guy. He's smart guy. He look for for Brazil, beautiful girl for him, and she's very nice. I, I, I met him, met her, and but he, but he's good. I think she can, she can help him to to keep focus, you know, and help him with things behind the scenes, behind the 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 flash. You know, on, on his uh, intimate, uh, I don't know say, uh, how to say it, but on his home, you know. <laughs> for sure, for sure. He's making it his home. Um, when you look at the pound for pound rankings in the UFC, the best fighter in the UFC, who is the best fighter in the UFC, pound for pound, not named Paulo Costa? Who is the best? <laughs> not named Paulo Costa. Yeah, not okay. named Paulo Costa. Uh, now. I'm between Khabib and John Jones for for their results, you know. I mean, because John Jones is, ha, have has a big legacy right now, and uh, almost on the on the feet like uh, as Khabib as well. So these both guys. But if Tony. Beats Habib April 18th in Brooklyn, UFC 249. Does that make Tony Ferguson the best number one pound for pound fighter? He's very tough, of course. We need to, to believe him. He's a real deal. Let's see. It will be a very interesting fight. Yeah, I, I I'm would, excited to, to watch that fight. I think we all are. And I was actually going to ask for his prediction, but I kind of gave it away yeah. right there. Yeah, but um, also though, I know last night, and we like I mentioned, we just spoke to Captain Eric about um. So everything's good between you and the T-Mobile security, right? Yeah, I don't understand what happened. Somebody, I think Hunter, Hunter, and Dana White told me before the the main event. 
after fight, you go inside the cage. And I say, okay, cool. So when the main event finish, I just jump because, you know, I need to cross a lot of people. So I will jump here. But when I jump, a lot of crazy kids come. And, no, no, not fight nobody. And uh, Homer was in the cage. I will fight against you again. Let's do fight. You're the the true champion. You you are the true waifu. Not not this, not this guy. He's scared. He avoid fight against me. Homer told me, and I said, okay, Homer, I agree. We can do. And uh, but you know, the, the I think the security was worried to make a big trouble, big you know, big fight on the crowd. And uh, Hunt, Hunter, you know Hunter? Yeah. The number two? Yeah, he does uh, all the contracts, right? Yeah, yeah. He's the guy who puts all the pen to paper. I love that guy. He's amazing. I like his glasses. His yeah. glasses. He's very intelligent. He, I love him. And uh, he come and say, Paulo, hold on. We change our, our idea. It's better, you know, go inside the cage. Because that fight was horrible. Maybe, maybe the best fight ever in history, UFC history. So it's not good for you, for your figure, your Im image. Yes. Go inside because that fight was horrible. These motherfuckers are ruined our promotion. Yep. And Dana, come. I, I told you, Dana. Hey, Dana. I can go there. I think we'd be better. I, I'd be there inside and say, no, we'd be bad for your image. You know, let, let, let for us, I would care about this promotion, not go inside now. Say, okay, I'll go out. Got it. Just, just to clarify, I think I totally understood what you're saying. They put an audible because after the Joanna and the Wiley Zhang fight, one of the best fights in yes. UFC mm -hmm. history, they I made agree. an audible yeah, uh, to change the plans to not steal the thunder for that and obviously the main event with Romero and Adesanya didn't live up to the expectation and also you kind of said what I was going to ask you because I saw Romero talking to you inside the cage you know and you guys were barbing back and forth I'm glad you just brought that up did Izzy say anything to you did you guys have any exchange did he say something to you before you left the arena inside the no, cage no okay. not before just after that crazy fight he talked with me on the cage. Hey, yo, let's do that fight again. You know, you deserve to be champion. I like some, something like that. Um, but I need you to say again, Adesanya is the most shameful champion I have seen ever. He don't deserve to be champion. He don't deserve that belt. He don't deserve even fight on UFC. He's a shameful. I want to transition to something you told the schmo downstairs. You got a nice little fat lip, and you've been with Logan Paul. You've been hanging out with him. Uh, I saw you with Bruce Buffer. You're filming a movie. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to that in two seconds because I'm going to introduce your director in studio. We're going to have him sit down next to you, but you're doing some sparring with Logan Paul, man? <laughs> yeah. I did a light box spa, sparring with him Saturday morning on UFCPI. He's good. He's good. He have talent. He has talent. I watched him lose to KSI though in Staples Center in that boxing fight. He lost to KSI, the rapper, man. Mm, I did saw. I did see th that fight, but I will I will watch to to make some judgment. <laughs> And uh, but but he's good man because I feel I felt I had I predicted he was gonna beat KSI and I know they took down the point because I think he hit him in the back of the head as he was falling down. Uh, who knows if he would have won the fight if they didn't take away that point? Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's got the wrestling background yeah. too in Ohio. Okay, I'm here from you right now. What happened there? But maybe so. Maybe he. Uh, he getting better, you know. He, he he got better now. I don't know because when I train with him, I and I can recognize 
when I I'm training with a, a talent guy and he he has talent. He's good and not on your boxing. He's good on wrestling also because he have he has a big heart, you know, true true white heart. You know, he don't he don't get, give up. And I can I can felt that. And uh, but just a light box spa, you know, not not real, real. Both me and he was without mouth guard, mouth guard. Yeah. So. <laughs> so what does he look like he make, then? He make a, a, a you be scared on my my bit. And uh, you know, but it was good. It was good. His face must be pretty bruised up from you, though. I imagine. Sorry. His face must be kind of bruised up then if he gave no, you no, a No, because I put helmet on oh, him. Oh, headgear. He was yeah. probably wearing all the everything. Yeah, I, okay. put, I put, of course, of course. Of course. That's the right way. I want to see him fight Dylan Dennis from Bellator. I know Dylan Dennis just had knee surgery, but those two have been barbing back and forth on social media. I want to see those two go at it. Logan Paul G- G- and Dylan Dennis. Um, I believe Dylan Dennis cannot handle for him. That's why I want to see it. I want to actually see them. I mean, everyone says, "Oh, Dylan Dennis is just jujitsu, uh, just jujitsu. Just jujitsu. He can't strike." Yeah, and he, I just want to see them fight. You know, Dylan Dennis is maybe one of the best on grappling, mm-hmm. on no G. I respect him. He's a student of uh, Marcelinho Garcia. Is for I am big fan of Marcelinho Garcia. He's a Brazilian. Jiu-Jitsu fighter. He was amazing. He got ADCC. I don't remember the year, but maybe 2016. He's very small guy, like uh, 70 kilos, like uh, 150 pounds. And he beat giant guys. You know, I remember. I saw. I, f- I followed him for a long time. But Gillon Dennis came from MMA. But he need to improve himself on stand up to be a, a great, great thing on MMA. He's very good on no G. And uh, you know he he trained with McGregor. McGregor is one of the best um, strikers ever. And he's Javon Dennis is on the the right place to <laughs> to increase himself on. On this area of martial arts, and uh, he need to learn something with McGregor. But you know, I think he he can improve it himself. But right now, I I bet on Logan Paul against him. Definitely want to see it. But now let's get back to you. I know they're working on a documentary, Boracina documentary. I yeah. want to bring in your director, Tal Farhi. This will be amazing, man. Um, we're, we're gonna we're, let's do this. It's gonna be a lot of behind the scenes about yes. your life. They're gonna release it after your title fight. I don't want to steal his thunder. Let's have him sit down right here. <clears throat> Tal, take a seat, man. Welcome to the Schmo Zone. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course, man. Obviously, my voice is a little bit, you know, crazy from the fight. We were screaming Paulo, Paulo the whole time. <laughs> so it was very, very. Uh, Demanding. I think I'm, I exerted more effort than those two uh, in the octagon. Yeah, man. Uh, what did you think of everything? I mean, I guess you were right next to him, right when we, he we were, was we escorted were acro- out. We or? were across. We were across the way. We were on the floor. Okay. Um, we had a, we had a great time leading up to that fight, but then we had a really good time seeing the the results. So. Yeah. So uh, talk to me about this documentary. You know, you uh, the modern day Rocky right over here. He's the best looking, scariest guy in the UFC. I mean, I get Israel Adonisania calls you the uh, the Ricky Martin uh, look alike. Viva la vida loca. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I believe th- this guy can, you know, Tal, Tal Fahi is a great dude. I met him on Phoenix. Uh, Captain Eric introduced me to him. And this guy is very good on his job. He works a lot and he brings some good passionness. For this documentary about my life, about my trajectory, things that nobody knows yet, you know. So this could be amazing to show who is the true Paulo Costa Borrachinha. 
from where I come, and uh, the the very poor area of, from Brazil, how how things, how tough was my life, you know. So this can be amazing documentary, and uh, we believe it will be nice to to launch this with my. How can I say? Uh, after take my take the belt, you know, will be a a great thing. Ab you know, after all things that I need to do, I need you know to to become a champion. So, Tao, please tell me, tell tell <clears throat> us about that. Well, uh, likewise, it, it, you're a good dude, do a great dude, and a great fighter. And uh, you know, we we want to show people <clears throat> uh, Paulo's. You know, behind the scenes, right? Of course, everybody wants to know what what are these guys like when they're not, you know, jumping off cages and trying to tell people, you know, they're going to break their face. They're actually very, very nice people, right? So Paul's got a great heart, a great family life, and loves his country. And America needs to know him too, you know, because it's such a global sport and it's very influenced by the United States. So we want the United States to get to know him more. And how are we going to do that by just telling a story and telling the truth? And we're going to follow Paulo. Uh, and we're going to show some stuff from the past, like he was talking about some of the trials and tribulations that he's had, tragedies, but how he is a fighter and he overcomes. And that's what it's all about. You know, when you keep on going forward and I don't know if you saw the last fight in 241, Paulo kept on charging forward and forward and that's his style. He does not stop. So we're not going to stop with this film. We're going to go take it all the way to the top. Um, we, we do have some, some pretty interesting people in the film. Uh, like, you know, Logan Paul has stepped into it a little bit. Bruce Buffer, I saw too. Uh, Bruce Buffer, uh, he's actually going to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, heavily involved in the, in this as well. Um, and we, we have some great partners that really make it happen because, you know, uh, you know, it takes it takes uh, some fuel to, to make these things happen. And so great sponsors like Grimaldi's Pizzeria, which is, you know, they have 50 locations. They're franchising. They're hu the world's best pizza for the world's best, you know, fighter. Um, in addition, we also have uh, LiftedTrucks.com, which is a, a company that has been, uh, you know, so gracious uh, with us and with this film. So those partners bringing people together um, and making it happen is what, what this is going to, you know. But while, you know, obviously filming and working with Paulo, what surprised you the most that, you know, you didn't know about Paulo before? How much time it takes to get him to leave his bed because he sleeps all day long so we well no he doesn't he trains and he sleeps that's what this guy does and so he's he's a very very committed um i've never seen anybody so committed to his craft i thought these guys just you know hang out and eat dinner and have fun all day and yeah they work out no the, the, to do what he does and to be able to um you know, live the life that he has to live because, you know, he has to travel away from his family, away from his loved ones, his girlfriend. And so it's it's really a dedication that I did not know existed. And I see it face to face and it will bring it, you know, to everybody's table. And and uh, you guys will see it soon, too. The one question I did have is what really um, did you learn about him that you weren't expecting that's kind of threw you off guard throughout the process of the filming so far? He cares a lot about people. That's it. Good guy. All around good guy. Yeah. That's great to hear. That's totally great to hear. Thank you. And Paulo, <laughs> uh, you know, being a becoming a movie star, man. What did you learn throughout this process, man? Having the cameras on you at all times. I'm sure in a lot of intimate parts of your day. I mean, it's a little bit different than embedded where you know the camera's going to be at certain parts at certain times, certain locations. Uh, what's been that transition like for you? You know, actually, it's not new to me because I came from the the Ultimate Fire Brazil 3 in 2014. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very young you know, very inexperienced. I, I I had I had the experience. I I had three three fights, just three fights when I went to the Ultimate Fight Brazil three. But there is crazy because 
I was on inside the house with four, 14 cameras all day, all time for during four, four days. So that helped me a lot with, you know, talk to camera and uh, in special in Portuguese because it's my my native language. English is a little bit difficult to me yet, but I improve my English. But I feel very comfortable to talk with camera, to talk in, with the media, to do interviews. And I think you just need to be natural, not fake, need to be true, need to be real. That's it. I, be, I try to be the most real that I can. It's possible. So, all this work to this documentary is just this, just be myself, you know, ju just just be uh, who I am. So, it's very easy to me. And then I do have one last question for you because I really appreciate all the time you spent on the Schmozone podcast. There is the pleasure is all mine, man. Uh, the pleasure is ours. There is a big fight next week. It's a UFC fight night in Brazil. Charles Oliveira, Kevin Lee. I want to get your thoughts because there's a lot of fans here that are big betting fans. And the schmo or Dave and Helen, we use mybookie.ag. My do book, we do mybookie.ag oh, okay. to bet on fights. Mybookie.ag. If you're listening or if you're watching the podcast, I will be there also. I'll you'll be there. there. You'll yeah. be there. So we're I'll gonna get there. your thoughts. Good. Uh, anyone who's we're gonna get your thoughts, and we're gonna hear it from the man himself. He's gonna be there. I want to get your thoughts on who's gonna win that fight. Go to mybookie.ag and use the promo code Schmozone. You're gonna hear from this guy, Paulo Costa, and he is going to tell you who he thinks is gonna win that fight. You know, they'll match up to a 50% signing up bonus when you use that promo code. If you deposit $500, they'll give you an extra $250. Go ahead, use the promo code SchmoZone and bet. Who do you got? Oliveira or Lee? Ooh. Yeah. Let me let me think I will be about. I know I will be there. Uh I invite our, our president for Brazil. Maybe he will be there also because he's, Brazil is the capital, is where Brazil, the the president Jair Bolsonaro lives now. I invite him, invite his son. I'll be there on the first row watching with him. Probably. I think he's now on America, but he will come back before the fight. And uh, I know Charles Oliveira. He came from Jiu-Jitsu, but he trained a lot in Muay Thai. Uh, I will be Patriot. I will with Charles Oliveira. You saw Kevin Lee's knockout in New York, though. Kevin Lee's tough guy. Yeah, he's tough big. Tough guy. Would be not easy, but you know, to not be between 50 50, I will go with Charles Oliveira. Who do you got, Helen? Kevin Lee. She's going with Kevin <laughs> Lee. Okay. <clears throat> Final thoughts in the Schmo Zone podcast. This is a crazy episode. It was, it was a loaded episode. Yeah. Happy 30th birthday. Oh, happy to birthday. David. Happy oh. birthday. <laughs> we, are, we are going hiking. I'm going to Horseshoe Bend, getting off the grid. In love with Mother Nature, get in one. I appreciate that, but it's next Friday, Friday the 13th. This upcoming Friday. Yeah, I'm getting old. Nice. But we appreciate it. Cannot wait for this documentary. Tal, you're the man. We met in Phoenix last week at Henry Cejudo's house. Yes, we did. That was good times. Great time. Yeah. The Eraser, Paulo Costa. We got to see the fight happen. July 11th, <coughs> that's that's when they're trying to probably make it? Yeah, probably yet. Just wait for the night, but... Almost 100%. He, he wants to get the clearance from the doctor, but we want to see it all done. This is excellent. You'll see that. Too. We'll see that. The Schmo Zone Episode 6, we're out. Mm -hmm.